Hey guys, welcome back to an episode of Card Review. So today we're looking at Merlin. Yes, Merlin. The card for Noble Knights who we've been waiting forever for. So, you know, when they said that, hey, you know, Noble Knights are getting Merlin and we didn't know what he did, we're like, oh, well, is he going to be able to search for Noble Knights? Is he a Rhoda for Noble Knights? Because back when, we, you know, we were hearing about Merlin, Rhoda was still at one. I mean, yeah, Rhoda was still at one. So, Noble Knights are a fine deck. Of course, they just had consistency problems and you know through Rhoda going up to three and Merlin this deck should be ready to go so let's go ahead and look at Merlin and determine if he shall be played in Noble Knights or not so Merlin is a dark spellcaster effect level three with 1400 attack and 500 defense his effect is you can only use each effect of Merlin once per turn first effect you can tribute this card, special summon one Noble Knight monster from your deck. You cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this effect, except for Noble Knight monsters. So, you gave Noble Knights a lone fire, and you know what? That is what they needed. That is exactly what they need. That is going one step above and beyond what they we thought. We thought that Merlin was going to be like, you know, like a Stratos or something like that. When he's summoned, you get to search for a Noble Knight, and then, of course, you have to wait a whole turn to go ahead and Noble Summon, because you already use your Noble Summon this turn. He takes it the whole yard, the, the next step above, being able to tribute it to summon the Noble Knight from your deck. So, of course, the main Noble Knight is Madrat. Everybody knows that. I don't even play Noble Knights, and I know it's Madrat. So, with Triple Madrat and Triple Rota and Triple Merlin, you should be able to get that Madrat fairly consistently. Of course, you can also run Pond of Duality, Upstarts, and various cards like that as well. But definitely, definitely, uh, this is one of the way. Also, because you have a high spell count, to your Noble Arms cards, you can also run Summoner Monk. So that's another thing that you could do. But Lone Fire for uh, Noble Knights um, definitely helps. Definitely, definitely helps. Let's go ahead and look at his other effects. So, during either player's turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard and immediately after this this effect resolves, special summon one Noble Knight Synchro Monster using monsters you control. So, pretty much, it allows you to Synchro Summon into a Noble Knight Synchro Monster during your opponent's turn. So, you know, it, you can uh, easily use it to hop out of the way of stuff, you know? You know, you can have your Noble Knights on the field and your opponent can go like, uh, you know, activate something you can just hop out the way so uh not too terrible as also the other effect is during eight player's turn you can bench this card from your graveyard made after this effect resolves xc one noble knight xc monster using monster you control so i don't know why they didn't just say synchro or xc using i don't know why you had to be two separate effects like that but eh whatever but those uh those effects are decent they're not terrible but that's not the one you want to care the one you want to care about is that he is a lone fire for noble knights so where do Noble Knights sit in the meta now since they're ready to go? Now since they got triple Madrat and triple Rhoda and triple Merlin, where where is where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? So I think that Noble Knights will be a great anti-meta-ish deck. You know, where they they jump out the bushes and going against the meta and they compete against the top decks, of course. You know. Uh, the top decks, of course, being, you know, the three, except I'd say kind of like 2.5, because I'm just not a big, f I'm, I'm a big fan of Satellas, but I'm not a big fan of saying that Satellas are one of the top meta decks, just because they're not as strong as the other two, because they run out of resources. I mean, they top, and I know people use the deck, and then, of course, there's strength in numbers, but I, I in my opinion, I definitely feel like Shadals and Burning Abyss are much stronger decks, because of their effects that resolve in the graveyard over the Tell Knights, but... Anyway, going against the top three, this will be a great deck to have as anti against those decks. So, what I want to say is step aside, Bujins. Here come Noble Knights because that that's where they that's where Noble Knights are gonna sit right next to Bujins, right on the bus next to Bujins, and be like, "Hey, what do you do? Oh, well, I make I give the meta decks a hard time. I have high consistency. I play Kaiser." 
And I pretty much say, you don't get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And the normal players play like, hey, me too! You know, oh, you got triple Tenki? Oh, well, I got triple Rota. Oh, you got Yamato? Well, you know, I got my Madrat, who can go into the deck C, who can equip all these to make so I can't be destroyed, and I can't be targeted with Excalibur. Oh my god, the most annoying card in Noble Knights. Excalibur! Excalibur! So they pretty much will do the same thing. Oh, and I also play Kaiser. So, but I do it a little bit better than you, Mr. Bujin. You see, because the monster that I'm summoning is going to be much stronger, much scarier than what you can do, Mr. Bujin player. Now, the only thing that the Bujin player would, of course, have on the Noble Knights would be in controlling the battle phase. But, essentially, they would both be doing the same job. Both be doing the same job. Being that anti-meta rogue matchup against the meta, doing the whole Kaiser play. And I totally don't mind that. You know, I totally welcome it. Uh, broadening ho the horizon of, you know, the, t the decks that can face off against these top decks and maybe put them in their place, you know? So, uh, definitely looking forward to it. I'm actually planning on having this deck uh, be on daily duels. I, I don't really know how to play it, so i got to, of course, learn how to play Nora. But as soon as Merlin is on there and, uh, you know, everything is ready to go, then we can go ahead and try it out and we can go ahead and see uh, whether this deck will be, uh, you know, uh, good or not. So... Uh, it will probably be replacing Madoche since Madoches are kind of falling off. So, it'll probably be replacing Madoches. We don't need to play the Kaiser. We could just lock it down and we could just do awesome with it. And just see how consistent this deck really is. Because that definitely, that's one of the things I want to see is how consistent this deck is. You know, you got triple Lone Fire and triple your search cards. I mean, that should be enough. So, um, you know, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that you Noble know, Knights do fine because, you know, in the past, there were always that kind of that, that hipster deck, really. I'd say there was that hipster deck where, you know, you're going down to the locals and the guy would be like, oh yeah, I play Noble Knight. And it's like, oh, really? You do? That's cool. And then you face him in a tournament and you slap the shit out of him. I mean, I know I did. There was actually one Noble Knight player where I had Bear on the field. I mean, Tenki, search for Bear, summon Bear, Bear throw the chair, destroy your monster, attack, you get another Tenki. Pass to you. And then he. Summons a monster, tries to attack my bear, I fiend is him, tanky, search, bear throw a chair, attack you again, get another tanky. Then the freaking idiot set a monster, and I'm like, activate the tanky, search, bear through the, throw the third fucking chair at your dumbass. And then I, I just wrecked him. I swear, I, I, we didn't even go to game three. I just wrecked him. I didn't even see what was on present against Roma. You know, they take a little bit of setup, but when they do, they, they can get it off. And like I said, the only thing that they were missing was the consistency. Rota was at one. There was no lone fire. Now you got Rota at three. You got Merlin at three. You should be able to do it. Now, of course, with that Noble Knight box thing, lots of people will be able to get their hands on Noble Knight. So hopefully you will be able to see this deck more often. My only problem with the box is that, you know how the deck is $50? 50 dollars five zero you only get one madrat what the fuck really you get almost two of everybody else i think you only get one merlin too i think you get one madrat and one merlin and then one of that uh that uh oh they also have that uh that uh blue incarnation card too so that should definitely help as well totally forgot about that i'll probably look at that in the next episode uh but uh you know in the box, you you get two boars, two whatever, two 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 two. You only get one Madrat, the leader of the deck. You only get one for fifty dollars. I I'm sorry, I think that's dumb. It's not like it's not like if it was like a structure deck, if it was like ten dollar structure. Sure, I can understand that one Madrat. That's fine. You go to the store, you pick up three structure decks, you smack them together, and bam, you got yourself a noble knight. But this isn't a structure deck. This is a box that costs 50 fucking dollars. I'm gonna pay 50 fucking dollars for one Madrat Konami. Mm -hmm. That's so dumb. So dumb. Now. So it might be. 
I mean, I, it, I'd really have to see how expensive these cards would be because, of course, they're obtainable every single time. So, how expensive the cards would be individually? Because sometimes, com sometimes depending on the cards, you know, despite them being easy to obtain, they make the set. You know, some structure decks, they the, that single card makes a structure deck. For example, uh, uh, Supply Squad. That's like a four to five dollar card in a structure deck that costs ten dollars. So, half of it. I want to know how much Merlin, how much Mordrag, how much the spell card, how much of these, all these cards in this box are worth individually, and whether it's either cheaper to go ahead and purchase a box and then get two more of each card individually, or is it cheaper to buy two boxes and get the one card? Oh, oh yeah. What, 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 what is the ratio here to figure it out? But we're only gonna find that out when the box actually comes out and people start, you know. Getting on Noble Knights or not getting on Noble Knights. Like I said, it, uh, you know, this, that's a secondary market thing that I'm talking about. And the secondary market, of course, fluctuates with what the players want and what they don't want. And when something that they want uh, is popular, then, of course, the, the price skyrockets. I mean, look at Vanities. It's like a $30 common. You know, even even confirmed for the reprint in 5D's World, it's still $25 common. You know, it's not like it's like, oh, there's a reprint? Oh, well, Vanities is now worth $2 because it's a common. Nope. So, like I said, when something is popular, the price goes up. So, I'm wondering how popular will these Noble Knights be? Will they just, you know, skyrocket? Well, even despite the box, we're like, well, the meat and potatoes of the $50 box is, of course, Madrat, Merlin, and the... Uh, and uh, the spell cards, so, uh, you know, uh, $10 from Merlin, $10 from Madrat, and $10 for, uh, you know, the, 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 the spell card. Now, I'm not sure how, how people are going to do it. I'm not sure how people are going to value it. I'm not sure how the secondary market is going to value it until the day we see it comes out, and you know, a couple days after that, and see how many people want to play Noble Knights, how, how it's selling, and what's up with that. But, um... I'm just excited for Noble Knights. I'm happy that I can finally see this deck because, of course, this deck is... It was kind of like spell books where, you know, every couple of sets you would get some new cards. It would be all secret rare and shiny and all expensive. And they'd be like, hey, you're a Noble Knight player. You got a ton of guap. You got the stack of cash. What? You... A down payment on a car? No, buy this Noble Knight deck. Now, I you know, everybody who had Noble Knights before is probably kicking themselves because, of course, this Noble Knight box, you pretty much get everything, so... Um, for those of you who want to play Noble Knights, then hey, yeah, hey, there you go. But still, it's a $50 box, but... Oh, $50 box from the woman draw, so stupid. But, yay, you're, you should be consistent. I mean, triple row to triple, um, Madrat and triple Melvin. You, Mer, Melvin. I'm sorry, that's the name of my roommate. <laughs> triple, triple my roommate. Everybody, you get triple of my roommate, and you freaking... Oh my god. Merlin. You should be totally fine, totally fine. So, um, go ahead and tell me what you guys think about. Well, tell me a what you guys think about Merlin. What do you what do you where do you guys think Noble Knights will be in the meta, and uh, about the whole paying fifty dollars for one Madrat thing. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Car Review. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Let me go ahead and look at that uh, that spell card that they're getting because I totally forgot what it did, sort of. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and look at it and discuss it since I haven't done that yet. All right, thanks for watching.